Let me guess. You're stressed about your check ride for your commercial pilot's license, and that's why you clicked on this video. Ha! Guess what? Me too. That's why I'm making this video. Uh, so I just went over the beginning of the ACS, got some uh, questions uh, that would be a check ride on the check ride, uh, and then I got a lot of the answers. Uh, so yeah, just bear with me. I'm not a CFI, but I know these answers are correct. Uh, double check if. Uh, Ask your CFI if the video is correct. I mean, I'm pretty sure I got it right. Uh, I want to get the right answers on the check right anyways. So, yeah, let's get into it. All right, Marty, are you ready to start the oral portion of your check ride? Does Dolly Parton sleep on her back? <laughs> nice. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and start off by uh, show me or tell me where in the far aim are the requirements listed for the commercial pilot certification. Okay, that's gonna be in the part 61, 120s, specifically the uh, part 61, 123, 125, and 127, also the 129. What documents contain the testing standards for commercial pilot certification? That would be the commercial ACS. And how do you know your copy is current? The latest version is posted on the FAA.gov. Okay, so for a commercial uh, add-on check ride, show me in the ACS where you would uh, determine which task an examiner is required to include on the practical test. I just have to go ahead and find the uh, um, additional ratings and task table in the ACS. Okay, sounds good enough. <clears throat> Is there an age requirement to be a commercial pilot? If so, what is it? Yes, uh, you have to be 18 years of age. All right, let's say that after you pass your commercial check ride, you stop flying. The training just becomes too expensive. 10 years pass before you see a job listing online for a pilot position where, in exchange for a salary, you would be on call each week to fly the owner of a 230 horsepower to various destinations around the country day and night. You would be his employee and most of the flying would be single pilot IFR. As a commercial pilot, are you eligible to apply for this position? Uh, yes. This is part of, uh, this is part 91 flying. It's a typical corporate job, but I couldn't start flying or acting as PSC until I'm current and properly endorsed. Good job. And under what FAR would this operation fall under? It would fall under part 91. If you get hired, can you immediately start flying? Uh, no. What do you, you legally have to do before you can start flying in this position? Uh, first, I'd have to get current and properly endorsed, accomplish a flight review, and an IPC. If I'm carrying passengers, I gotta have three takeoffs and landings. Those landings must be to a full stop if I'm carrying passengers at night or in a tailwheel. I also need a current second class medical or first, as well as a high performance endorsement. Do you have to log these currency flights or is it enough that you've just completed them? Uh, they must be logged. Could you accept the job if you did not have an instrument rating? No. And why not? Without an instrument rating, I could only fly passengers during the day within 50 nautical miles. This job requires flying passengers farther than 50 nautical miles at night. What if the flights involved uh, carrying cargo only, no passengers? Then the instrument rating wouldn't be necessary because of the 50 nautical miles slash night restrictions. Uh, those only apply to passenger carrying operations. Okay. So if you own the uh, Cessna 182 and provided your current proficient, uh, could you post on Facebook that you would be willing to fly your friends to certain destinations for money? No, <laughs> that would be uh, holding out. Uh, would make this operation a common carriage. And what do you mean by holding out? In this case, advertising. Specifically, holding out means extending a willingness to transport persons or property from place to place for compensation. It's the defining feature of common carriage. What's common carriage? Flying for hire that involves holding out. And what is private carriage for hire? Flying for hire that does not involve holding out. All right, why can airlines and charter operations do this, but you can't? They have a commercial operator certificate, namely the 121 or the part 135 certificates, similar to a business license. 
All right, so if you took the job as a Cessna 182 corporate pilot, what are some things you would want to keep an eye out for to ensure that you weren't part of an uncertificated, illegal common or private carriage operation? I'd make sure that the owner slash operation isn't selling seats or cargo space and just generally the flight shouldn't be generating revenue. Passengers should be traveling for related purposes. Uh, the aircraft slash operation shouldn't be engaged in too many contracts and absolutely no short term contracts. And as stated before, no holding out. Okay, nice job. If you were a commercial pilot and also a flight instructor, could you buy a plane, advertise on Facebook that you were willing to provide uh, flight instruction for a certain hourly fee? Yeah, this is a uh, one of those 1191E exceptions. What do you mean by 119 Echo exceptions? This is the regulation that lists types of operations that uh, permit common carriage without an operator certificate. Okay, and what are some of these examples? Uh, we have flight instruction, non-stop air tours uh, conducted within 25 nautical miles of the departure airport after first obtaining an LOA from the FAA, complying with the rest of the myriad of provisions surrounding air tours. Ferrying or training flights, air aerial work operations including crop dusting, seeding, spraying, bird chasing, banner towing, and also non-stop parachute operations. When is a 125 certificate needed? It's a commercial operator's license that is required for a large aircraft even when common carriage is not involved. Specifically, it's required for when the plane's max payload exceeds 6,000 pounds or has a passenger seating capacity of 20 people or more. When is a high performance endorsement required? When one of the engines is rated for more than 200 horsepower. All right, cool. Let's say you have your commercial multi and single engine ratings. Are you a are you passenger current in the Cessna 182 if you have done three landings in the previous 90 days in a PA44? No, passenger currency is class specific. I'd only be current in a multi-engine land airplane in that case. Cool, all right. <clears throat> you said that in order to carry passengers at night, three landings are required. When exactly do you need these landings to have occurred? The period from one hour after sunset to one hour before sunrise. And that's in order to carry passengers during what time frame? It's the same time frame, one hour after sunset to one hour before sunrise. Can the landings be stop and goes or must they be full stop taxi backs? Stop and goes are permitted. Who is permitted to conduct a flight review? A uh, CFI or other person designated by the administrator. Uh, the CFI must have his or her instructor rating in the class or of airplane in which the flight review is being conducted. And how often must a pilot complete a flight review? Uh, every 24 calendar months. Uh, 24 calendar months from what? I.e. what starts the 24 calendar month clock? Either the last flight review or the last check ride. Last pilot check ride? Or do flight instructor check rides start the clock too? Any check rides. CFI rides count too. Does an IPC count? No. Do the airline pilots have to do the flight review as well? Generally, no. Uh, their routine uh, 125 and 135 proficiency checks out instead. Okay, cool. Say you take your last check ride on January 22nd, 2020. By what date will you need to complete your flight review or take another check ride if you intend to stay current? Uh, I need to take that January 31st of 2022. If you go beyond that date without completing a flight review, what happens? I couldn't exercise the privileges of my pilot certificates. I uh, couldn't act as PIC. Can you still log PIC time if you've exceeded the 24 month window without a flight review or a check ride? Yes, if I'm the sole manipulator of the controls and rated in that class of airplane. However, I cannot act as PIC because I'm not current. So there must be another pilot on board who is appropriately rated or endorsed and current uh, acting as PIC. 
Cool. All right. Good job. Say you've gone more than 24 calendar months without a flight review or check ride. How do you get current so that you can act as PIC again? Uh, complete a flight review. Does this get entered into IACRA? No. Does this failure go on your record? No, it's not even considered a failure. I just didn't earn the endorsement. If you pass a flight review, are you required to log it? Yes, for currency. And what does a flight review consist of at a minimum? At a minimum, one hour ground and one hour flight training. Yeah, you pretty much got it. Um, so the flight review also must include um, the flight maneuvers and procedures that at the discretion of the person reviewing you are necessary for the pilot to uh, be a safe pilot. You pretty much got that. I'm gonna give that to you. All right. You are a private pilot with single engine and multi engine land ratings. If you complete a flight review in a single engine, are you also current in a multi engine? Yes, once I do a flight review in any aircraft that I'm rated to fly, I'm now current in all the other aircrafts in which I'm rated. If you have a helicopter rating as well as airplane single engine and multi engine land ratings, and you accomplish a flight review in a helicopter, are you current in single engine and multi-engine land airplanes as well? Yeah. Nice. Is a current medical certificate required in order to receive a flight review? No, but this is a case where the person conducting the flight review needs to be able to act as PIC. Okay, so for obscure questions like this about flight reviews, where can you go get answers? I can just check the uh, AOPA's flight review guide. There's a uh, frequently asked questions in the back. And what class medical certificate are you required to take this commercial check ride with? Uh, third class for the flight, provided it's an airplane, not in a simulator, in which case there's no medical required. All right, nice job. And when is a current medical certificate required? Only when exercising the privileges of uh, my pilot certificate, so when acting as PIC on a flight. Okay, so we've talked about what you would have to do to be current legally. How about in terms of proficiency? Remember this position involves flying a Cessna 182 and you are trained in a Cessna 172. I'd be sure to do additional training in the Cessna 182 until I'm proficient in that particular model. And when can you log PIC time? Generally, when the pilot is rated for the aircraft and the sole manipulator of the controls. Also, solo students, flight instructors providing instructing, instruction, and safety pilots acting as PIC while the other pilot is wearing a view limiting device can also log PIC. And when can you log at nighttime? End of evening civil twilight to the beginning of morning civil twilight, as published in the American Air Almanac. And while we're at it, when must the navigation slash position lights be on? Sunset to sunrise, same as the tower beacon. Okay, cool. You passed your exam for your first class medical on January 5th, 2020. What is the last day your medical certificate itself is valid? January 31st of 2025. What if you're 40 or older when you took the exam? January 31st, 2022. Now tell me the expiration dates of your first, second, and third class privileges, assuming you are under the age of 40. Okay, uh, first class privileges expire January 31st of 2021. Uh, second class privileges expire January 31st, 2021. And third class privileges expire January 31st of 2025. What if you took your exam when you were 40 or older? Now what are the expiration dates of each of your privileges? Uh, the first class privileges would expire uh, July 31st of 2020. Uh, the second class privileges would expire January 31st of 2021. And then the third class privileges would expire January 31st of 2022. Nice. Okay, if you took your first class medical exam one day before turning 40, are you still entitled to 12 calendar months of first class privileges even after your 40th birthday? Or when you turn 40, do the privileges revert down to the six months? Uh, privileges correspond to one's age at the date of the exam. So my privileges would be valid for 12 calendar months. You are 41 years old and passed your first class medical exam eight months ago. What class privileges do you have now? I uh, have a second class. 
And for how much longer? Uh, four more months. And then what? 12 calendar months of third class. Good job. Okay. If the day after passing your medical exam, you come down with some ailment that would have been disqualifying had you had the condition prior to receiving your medical, are you still allowed to act as PIC? No. Medicals are self-regulating per FAR 6153. Where could you go to find a list of all the standards necessary to qualify for each class of medical? Um, that would be in FAR part 67. Okay. Um, if an aspiring pilot has a disqualifying condition in their past, like say epilepsy or a history of substance abuse, does this mean that she cannot qualify for a medical certificate and therefore can never become a pilot? No, she could apply for a special issuance or a stated statement of demonstrated ability, a soda. How would you go about applying for a special issuance or a soda? Well, the PHAC says to contact your local FISDO, which would presumably provide guidance on how to apply to the FAA Federal Air Surgeon. What's the difference between a special issuance and a soda? Uh, the former is potentially progressive conditions and comes with a valid period, so it must be renewed periodically. The latter is for a static condition, like poor eye vision, a loss of a limb, something like that, and only expires if the underlying condition worsens. Sodas are granted once the applicant demonstrates a proficiency despite the condition. What class or classes of medical are permitted after receiving a special issuance or soda? Uh, any. The SI or the soda will specifically uh, state which class of medical the pilot is eligible for. If you want to fly just small airplanes recreationally, is there a better option than going to an AME to get a medical certificate? Uh, yes, basic med. All right, so what is basic med and how does it work? Basic med allows pilots who just fly recreational to bypass the medical certificate AME process and instead see their normal physician. What is required to fly under basic med? You gotta hold a US driver's license, have held a medical certificate at some point after July 14th of 2006, uh, print out the basic med exam checklist and bring to any physician to fill out. You gotta do this every 48 months and then take an online basics, basic med self-examination course every 24 calendar months and then keep the filled out exam checklist and basic med online course certificate of completion in your logbook. Must a pilot flying under basic med carry her logbook with the online course certificate of completion when she acts as PIC on a flight? No. Does anything need to be submitted to the FAA? No. Can a commercial pilot fly under basic med? No, not when flying for hire. What are some of the aircraft operating limitations involved with operating under basic med? Can't fly for hire, no flights above 18,000 feet or faster than 250 knots, can't fly with aircraft with a max takeoff weight greater than 6,000 pounds or certified for more than six occupants, and no more than five passengers per any flight. All right, as a commercial pilot, what personal documents must you carry every time you fly while acting as PIC? Uh, pilot certificate, government photo ID, and your medical certificate. Cool. Uh, for government ID, could you use a birth certificate or a social security card? No. And why not? No photo. Uh, how about a passport? Yes, it has a photo. All right. When flying a high-performance airplane, do you need to bring your logbook containing the high-performance endorsement? No. All right. Talk to me about proficiency versus currency. Uh, the former considers uh, it concerns safety, uh, whereas the latter deals with legality. And why is it important to distinguish the two? Well, it's important to recognize that just because I'm current doesn't mean I'm proficient and vice versa. All right, cool. I'm going to go ahead and refill my coffee. I'll be right back. Congratulations, all you aspiring commercial pilots. I know this stuff is a little bit dry, so good on you for making it through. Uh, this was my first like long form edit. So go ahead and leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know I'm doing wrong. Let me know I'm doing right. Uh, so I hope this helps you out on your check ride and uh, I'll be making a few more soon enough. Uh, other than that, I hope you guys have a great day. See ya.